This is a Marshall Enterprises presentation. Peace and power, everybody. Welcome to another episode, another presentation, another conference, another get together with your boy Bud Brownsville. I have some more information to pass along. And I'm going to take personal credit right now because no one is doing the research. No. Correction, people probably are, but no one is actually bringing forth the information like Bud Brownsville. And if they are, kudos to them. Please uh, point them out. Well, I would like to personally build with them and I'd like to watch or learn from those individuals as well. However, anything that I put my mind to, anything I put my energy to, I give it my all. And in saying that, I've been researching for the last month heavily in the areas of firearms. I've did studies prior, but I've dibbled and dabbed. I've jumped, you know, from here to there. But because of the direction that I'm taking one of my companies, I need to do extensive, extensive research to make sure that all my my eyes are dotted and my T's are crossed because I do not want to be a statistic or a casualty. And I definitely want to take full advantage of the laws that are there and the rights that are afforded to me as an American. With that being said, the name of this or the title of this presentation is going to be Private Firearms. Private Firearms. In my last video, I got a comment from a brother speaking or accusing me of pretty much selling my people into slavery or putting them back into the system, what have you. And my answer to that accusation is, first of all, I rebut it. I deny it. But I am no more responsible for what another person or an individual does, no more than the manufacturer of firearms or the manufacturer of knives and machetes. People use machetes in violent ways against individuals, against people. Is the manufacturer of that, man, that uh, machete responsible? Is the person that sold that machete to the individual that committed the crime responsible? Is the school teacher of that individual that used the machete in a crime responsible? No, is the parent of the individual that used the machete to commit a crime responsible? No, the blame falls on the individual and the individual's actions. So if I present information to you and you take the information and run with it and you don't do your own due diligence of making sure it's good information, it's right information, that's not my fault. That's your fault. I don't control what you do. What I eat, you don't shit. And what you eat, I don't shit. So move right along. On your screen, you're going to notice the homepage of the National African American Gun Association. There are several I want to say hundred, several hundred gun groups, gun organizations. The biggest and most prolific in NRA. 
I am not a member of the NRA, nor do I choose or want to ever become one. I am not a member of the NAA, the National African American Gun Association, although I plan and intend to be in the next month or two as my plans are finalized. Will I discuss my plans publicly? No, I will not. And also to the, the brother that commented that I was selling everybody or selling my people back into slavery. There's a difference or there is a thing called public and private. We're not allowed to just, not that we're not allowed to, but you really shouldn't discuss private details or private information publicly. Although in this forum that we know as YouTube, there are information that we can share publicly and you should do the follow-up and the in-depth research on your own. So that's what I intend to do with this video and all of my other videos. I, I try to skirt the line and give you as much as possible to give you the hunger and the desire to research on your own or to seek more, but seek it privately. So yes, there is a private way to set up a firearms trust. That is the direct answer to the brother that asked the question. There is indeed a way to set up a private firearms trust. Will we discuss it in this forum? Hell to the no. Will I touch on it? Hell to the yes. You need to make people aware that these things exist. Just as I'm going to make you aware that private firearms exist and I'm going to show you in words and in sightings because I'm going to cite a lawyer, a bar association lawyer of which we should never get to represent ourselves or to present ourselves <laughs> or to stand in, et cetera, et cetera. Listen, these are the, this is a the defense lawyer speaking in the realm of firearms. And speaking on protections, speaking on the law, the codes, Some of this stuff does not apply to a private individual. But if you're a one that do not have your paperwork and your status in the right order, if your status is not right and exact, let me leave it there, you may be subject to a charge, subject to prosecution you may get yourself in a world of trouble. But if you pay attention to what is outlined and you pay attention to what is given and you also pay attention to what is not being said and why, you can form your own opinions as to what you can and you cannot do. So let's dig in, shall we? I want to show you what I have come across. So if I can get rid of the screen here, I'm sorry, not the screen, but I don't even know if you can see this box that I'm moving. I'm trying to get it out the way. So I can go to this page here. Now, Janet Portman is an attorney. And I believe if you click this link, it will take you to Janet Portman's information. Let's do that real fast. The website NOLO. Janet Portman is an executive editor. She happens to be an attorney. Janet Portman oversees editorial work on all NOLO books, articles, and websites. 
She specializes in residential and commercial landlord tenant law, legal issues related to courts and criminal law. She's the author or co-author of Every Landlord's Legal Guide, Every Landlord's Guide to Finding Great Tenants, First Time Landlord, Your Guide to Renting Out a Single Family Home, Every Tenant's Legal Guide, Renters' Rights, Negotiate the Best Lease for Your Business, Leases and Rental Agreements, The California Landlord's Law Book, Rights and Responsibilities, and California's Tenants' Rights. Portman received undergraduate and graduate degrees from Stanford University and a law degree from Santa Clara University School of Law before joining NOLO in 1994. She practiced law as a public defender. Okay, so that's Janet Portman and Janet Portman wrote this very fine article that we're gonna go back to now. And the article is titled, Homemade Guns, Are They Legal? Must They Be Registered? Let me look again and see how long this article is. So I really don't want to read the whole thing, but I think I'm going to read it anyway. Homemade guns, are they legal? Must they be registered? Homemade guns made from unfinished receivers, look that up, and on 3D printers are increasingly popular and need not be registered or bear a serial number, nor must the maker, owner, pass a background check. That's where she's starting from, people. Homemade guns made from unfinished receivers and on 3D printers are increasingly popular and need not be registered or bear a serial number, nor must the maker owner pass a background check. Okay? It would be reckless for a public defender or for an attorney to make such statements if they can't back it up. This attorney, Janet Portman, can back it up and we're going to see as we continue. This is a advertisement. We're going to skip that. Individuals in this country have been making their own guns for centuries. Did you catch that? It's true. The practice is deeply rooted in our constitutional history and tradition. Legal scholars have recognized that the Second Amendment's guarantee of the right to bear or right to keep and bear arms would be meaningless in practice unless the state afforded individually, individuals the ability to exercise that right, which includes making their own guns. For the past almost half century, however, the sale and subsequent control of firearms have been heavily regulated by federal law. I'll pause here for a second and add that what you control or what you create you control if the federal government by its subsidiaries or its franchises created firearms because when you register a business you give part ownership over when you incorporate you grant some kind of ownership or some kind of co-ownership it's like when you register your vehicle the state is co-owners in that vehicle so what you create you control move right along it may come as somewhat of a surprise that even in this era of regulation, it is still completely legal to make and own a hand, a homemade gun. Even more surprising, a gun made wholly or even 20% at home need not be registered and the owner need not pass a background check or obtain a license. I 
I'm pausing so y'all can marinate on that. There is a thing called public and there's a thing called private. The public cannot infringe upon the private. Private cannot infringe upon the public. What you do with your private affairs and your private business is not the government's business unless you make it their business. Moving right along. Gun control legislation. The Gun Control Act of 1968, GCA, mandated, among other things, that persons engaged in the business of dealing in firearms must be licensed by federal, by the federal government. It's 18 USC, subsection 921 at 21 C. This development made it illegal for an unlicensed person to make a firearm for sale or distribution. Are we catching this people? Law, law is absolute and law is precise. Do not add anything to it. Do not take anything away from it. Read it for what it is. So we're gonna read that again. 18, okay, let's start again. The Gun Control Act of 1968, GCA, mandated, among other things, that persons engage in the business. What's the business? A business sells, acquires, barters, etc. If you look up the definition of business, you get a clear understanding of what is being said here. So a persons engaged in the business of dealing in firearms must be licensed by the federal government. It's USC, subsection 921A, 21C. This development made it illegal for unlicensed person to make a firearm for sale or distribution. If you're making a firearm and you're not selling it and you're not distributing it, it's private. In addition, the law requires that firearms dealers must perform background checks on prospective purchasers and main records of all gun sales. If you are not selling or distributing the firearms of which you make for your own possession, it does not need to be registered. It does not need a serial number. It also does not fall under the characteristics or the, the restrictions of carry permits, carry licenses. Let's stay on the train and let's continue with this article. Now, this is an article by an attorney. Do not take this at face value. Do your own due diligence. Now, how do you find information about private manufacturing? Private firearm creating. Go to the library. Go to the law library. Look up firearms and read it as it is put before you. If we scroll back up to what the Gun Control Act and these sites are saying, this development made it illegal for an unlicensed person to make a firearm for sale. It does not say a licensed person to make a firearm, period. It says to make a firearm for sale or distribution, period, okay? So you have to interpret law as it is given, as it is intended. Now, let's move down. However, nothing in the GCA prohibits individuals from making guns for their own personal use. A non-licensed person may make a firearm 
provided it is not for sale and the maker is not otherwise prohibited from possessing firearms, such as a convicted felon. 18 U.S.C. Chapter 44, Subsection 922D. The federal law imposes none of the purchase restrictions on non-licensed possessors that it does on those who need licenses. And as a result, homemade guns need not be registered and the owner need not undergo background checks. It goes into who is prohibited from having guns. If you keep a gun in your home and have an adult living with you, you should know whether that person might be barred from having guns. People covered under federal prohibitions include those convicted of felonies or domestic violence misdemeanors, anyone subject to a domestic violence restraining order after hearing, and illegal drug users. California's prohibition also applies to people convicted of certain misdemeanors in the 10 years, including a domestic violence crime, and those who are subject to various types of temporary restraining and protective orders, including gun violence restraining orders under California's red flag law. Domestic Violence Protective Orders or Anti-Harassment Restraining Orders, 18 U.S.C. 922-G, California Penal Code, subsection 29800-29805-29825-2019. Modern Ways to Make a Homemade Gun. While it has always been illegal, or while it has always been legal, for an individual to make a homemade gun in practice terms, the process that has not been so easy. A gun is a highly machined piece of equipment depending on precise specifications of materials. Most individuals making firearms at home lack the equipment and know-how necessary to make a sophisticated piece of weaponry. However, modern technology has addressed many of these challenges by offering partial receivers and the ability to make a gun using 3D printing, explained below. While technology, impre while technology impressive, technologically impressive, both, met both methods come with a new set of considerations and concerns and are likely to be the topic of legislation and regulation. Now to briefly go into this here, what they're talking about. If you order parts for a firearm online, and you assemble it in your own home, it is 100% legal. And that is a private process. If you get some materials together and you manufacture your own firearm, as long as you are not forbidden or prohibited from owning or controlling, then that will be a private matter and it does not need to be registered does not need a serial number. You do not need a background check. Moving right along. 80% receivers or ghost guns. A gun's receiver is a part of the firearm that houses a mechanical component and projects the bullet. Someone using a finished receiver could assemble a functioning firearm by adding necessary additional parts, such as a stock, barrel, trigger component, and magazine. Because the GCA includes finished receivers in its definition of qualified firearm, someone purchasing a finished receiver would have to do so from a licensed firearm dealer. In addition, a person purchasing a finished receiver must pass a background check and register firearm. A finished receiver has a serial number that can be used to trace the receiver to the registered owner. An individual interested in avoiding a background check and gun registration process can instead buy an unfinished receiver, also called an 80% blank or partial receiver to make a ghost gun. So-called because it cannot be traced. An unfinished receiver is a partially completed receiver that re requires additional tooling to be completed. This kind of receiver is not technically a firearm and falls outside the regulatory scope of the GCA and so does not bear a serial number. The unfinished receivers 
are legal to sell and distribute and are widely available online and at gun shows. Because ghost guns are untraceable, it is impossible to know how many of these firearms have been assembled, sold, or used in violent crimes. Working with unfinished receivers. Unregulated receivers can be converted into working firearms by someone with very basic skills and tools. A purchaser uses a drill press to create holes in a receiver and adds other parts to make a fully functional gun. Finishing kits and how-to guides are extensively available online and through specialty markets. Many sellers host building parties where buyers come together to share tools and expertise and assemble their firearms. Ghost guns created with unfinished receivers range from basic handguns to semi-automatic weapons. As long as it's intended for personal use, a ghost gun is exempt from federal regulation. Individuals purchasing an unfinished receiver or a kit to complete the assembly of a ghost gun are not subject to a traditional background check and are not restricted by criminal or mental health history. Additionally, there are no sales records in conjunction with 80% receivers, and as a result, when a gun of this type is used in a crime, federal authorities cannot cross-reference information from stores about buyers. The guns themselves are untraceable because there is no serial number on them. Attempts to regulate ghost guns. In 2013, a federal house bill intended to ban unfinished receivers used to create assault weapons failed in its entirety. House HR, um, um, House, I can't get the word out right now. HR, House Resolution 2019. California has become the first state to require registration. As of July 1st, 2018, anyone who makes or assembles a gun must apply first for a serial number or other identifying mark from the State Department of Justice as of January 1st, 2019. Everyone who owned a firearm as of July, 20, July 1st, 2018 or later must apply for a serial number or identifying mark. The law has some serious exceptions. The law forbids the sale or transfer of a gun registered under these provisions. Violations can be charged as misdemeanors. California Penal Code, Section 29180 and following. 3D printed guns. Individuals can also make homemade guns. Individuals can also make homemade firearms using 3D printers. 3D printing, also known as addictive manufacturing, additive manufacturing, is a process whereby a three-dimensional model designed on a computer becomes a three-dimensional solid object as the printer lays down successive layers of material that conform to the program instructions. Gun parts, predominantly made of plastic, can be generated from 3D printers. While unattainable to most individuals when the technology first emerged, 3D printers are now widely commercially available at a relatively modest price. In May 2013, the open source firm Defense Distributed unveiled, unveiled the Liberator, a handgun made entirely from 3D pl uh, printed plastic pieces. Save for a common hardware store nail used as the firing pin. Didn't read that correctly, but. And made the digital blueprints available online. In the short amount of time since then, the technology has improved tremendously, resulted in extensively documented successful gun construction. Similar to their ghost gun cousins, instructions, guides, and highly detailed schematics for how to create a 3D printed gun are widely available on the internet, generally from anonymous sources. Comparably, 3D printed guns require no background checks, serial numbers, or registrations. While it is not illegal under the GCA to print and make a gun in one's home, there is a catch. Plastic, the material most 3D printers use to make the gun parts, 
because of the Undetectability Firearms Act, make illegal any firearm that cannot be detected by a metal detector. Every firearm must contain some amount of metal. This means that a plastic 3D printed firearm must have a metal plate inserted into the printed body. Such a requirement is difficult to enforce. However, because these firearms bear no serial number and are not registered, the opportunities to inspect these firearms and enforce the metal rule are practically nil. To learn more about the legality of 3D printed guns, see are 3D printed guns legal? There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. An article speaking about privately made firearms of which you can assemble in your own home. You can produce in your own home. It does not need to be registered. You do not need a background check. Now, there are arguments on both sides of the fence as to whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, my God, anybody can get this and, you know, terrorist this and terrorist. Yes, but the Constitution is clear. The right to bear arms and to be secure in your home should not be infringed. I understand compelling public interest, and I understand why people would seek to regulate certain things, but also know at the same time, people are looking to control one another, and people are looking to get into other people's business. It is not your business how many guns I have in my home. It is not your business if some of them were made by me or not. It is not your business if the firearms in my home are registered or not. It's not your business. It's not your business. But when people tend to make it their business and to figure out what the other person is doing or your neighbor is doing, mind your business. As long as what I'm doing in my house or my property does not infringe on your house and your property, it's none of your business. This is part two, calling this firearms, private firearms. And there will be several other parts coming because I've uncovered so much. And to put it all in one video is going to be difficult. It will be very, very long. So I want to keep these to a minimum. But I will, at the end of all these small videos, do a, not a follow-up, but I will bring it all together and give you an idea of what you could and should be doing. And this falls under the firearms trust that I spoke about in part one. Because what you can do is when you manufacture your own firearm, you can create your own registration number. You don't need to register it, but you can create your own identif identifying number and list that in your trust so that firearm would for all intents and purposes, be registered to your trust. If your home gets raided and they uncover several homemade weapons of which do not have any fire, um, I'm sorry, any serial numbers, how can you prove that they belong to you? So if you put your own unique identification numbers, identifying marks on these things, and an example could be the date that the firearm was created and your initials. Mine would be 0721-2020 RLM. I would etch that on the firearm, thereby creating my own serial number 
identifying mark. And if two guns, two firearms were created on that day, you know, you might want to add RLM01 or 01 RLM, you know, make it your own, be creative. Give it a unique identifying number, list it as your property on a Schedule A in your trust. You can list it on your UCC1 if you like. And now you're more or less having a conversation as opposed to defending yourself. These firearms get confiscated or what have you, you now can present documentation that this is a property of a trust, whether you are the trustee or you could be the beneficiary, whoever, you can show proof that you are legally supposed to be in possession or legally can have possession of that weapon. You don't have any criminal record or anything prohibiting you from owning that weapon. It's just a conversation. They would have to release that property to you. So it's about operating in the private, but understanding the public. Learn the laws and learn what applies and what doesn't apply. Learn what you have to do and what you don't have to do. Because leave it to your local politician. They'll say, oh, you're going to have to register that weapon. Well, that's not what the law says. And I like to follow the law. Get a group together and change existing laws, whereas there should be reci reciprocity for concealed carry permits nationwide. Why is there any obstruction to this? Well, because we don't have a group of individuals in place that are fighting on our behalf to make that happen, which is not true. We do, we have individuals, but the push is not strong enough. So once we educate more people, we can get this done. It should have been done. It's long overdue. But this has been a presentation of Bud Brownsville. We're talking about private guns, private firearms. And I hope this was an eye opener for some. I hope this gives you the urge to do your own due diligence and look up some more. Ask me some questions. You want to know more of my resources? I'm going to, I always list my resources. I always, you know, always. You should find it in the description below in this video. But definitely please leave me a comment. Click that like button. Subscribe. Watch all my videos. <laughs> Put it on, you know, autoplay and let it run. But I thank you for stopping by. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me, you know, an opportunity to present some information to you. I thank you for being receptive. This is Bud Brownsville signing out. And I'll leave with this last page, which is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. When I present these informations, uh, and if there's a lot of information, individuals that, you know, have a problem with me speaking about the Alphabet Boys or, you know, showing some kind of camaraderie. I'm private, but I operate publicly. And I know how to form alliances and to work with individuals to best suit, to best equip my businesses in my best interests. So I'm not anti-government. I'm not anti-organization, uh, anti this, and I'm not anti anything except anything looking to take away my rights. So with that being said, please um, scroll through the ATF website. Some good information up there. It might help you further your endeavors. Look into the federal firearms license because that will be the next thing that I definitely talk about a little more. Peace and power, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.